Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at comparing the SDR Play RSP-1 and RSP-1A. Now the RSP-1A has been out for about a year now. It is currently the end of December 2018 and has actually replaced the RSP-1. Now I've wanted to do this comparison for a while, but I haven't gotten around to it until now. And the reason I've been inspired to do it is that I've been talking to Tom of Tom's Radio Room Show, and he has recently acquired an RSP-1A and has been doing the same comparisons in his shack between his new RSP-1A and his old RSP-1. And he wanted to know if I was seeing some of the same differences that he's seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and do my comparison here, and then I'll compare notes with Tom, and we'll see what the consensus is. So before we switch over to desktop screen capture mode, I'm going to give you just a quick look at my hardware setup. So taking a look at the hardware setup, you can see that I've got the two SDR Play RSP units over there on top of that shelf side by side. The RSP-1A is the unit on the left closest to the edge of the shelf, and the older RSP-1 is on the right. Both units are hooked up to my old HP desktop computer, which you can see over on the left. That has an AMD Phenom quad-core processor. So on the back of each of the RSPs, you may be able to see that I have an SMA to SO239 adapter. And on each radio, it is connected through a three-foot coax jumper to an antenna switch. The antenna switch that I'm using is this older two-position switch that I've had for a while. And what the antenna switch is doing is it's allowing me to share the 40 and 80 meter fan dipole that's out in my backyard and up in the trees about 15 feet or so. So that was a quick look at the hardware setup. Let's jump over to screen capture mode and start the compare. So take a look at the desktop here. You can see that I've got two instances of SDR Uno version 1.22 running side by side. Now I've tried to set both instances up as identically as possible. Now there are a few differences between the two radios that the software automatically identifies, so there are a few things that are different. So starting off at the top, the first two rows here are the instance of SDR Uno that are controlling the RSP-1A, as you can see here by this label. You can also see that I've got the main spectrum and auxiliary spectrum windows for the 1A colored green. The bottom two rows are the instance that is running the RSP-1. And you can see that I've got the spectrum windows for this instance colored with the default SDR Uno blue color. So going through window by window, let's take a look at some of the similarities and differences. Up here on the 1A, you can see my final sample rate is 3.3 megahertz. My IF bandwidth is 300 kilohertz. I'm in zero IF mode and I currently have my RF gain set to the maximum, which is 47.9 dB. Down here on the 1, you can see I've got the same sample rate, same IF bandwidth, also in zero IF mode, but currently the gain is showing as 44.2. And this is where one of the differences come in. The older RSP-1 uses an IF gain control that I've currently got set to automatic mode in the software, whereas the RSP-1A uses an RF gain control that you can set manually by changing this slider. Now you can control the IF gain independently in the RSP-1, but it is recommended to use the automatic mode, so that's what I'm going to do. So over here you can see that the sample rate is set to 2.64 MHz with a decimation of 8 for the 1A, and down here on the 1 I've got the same setting, 2.64 with a decimation of 8. So up here in the 1A, you can see the only button I have on this row is for the bias T. And what that does is that just turns on the bias power for a antenna mounted amplifier if you happen to have one of those. And I don't, so I'm going to leave mine off. Down here in the RSP-1, you can see that the bias T is not an option, but we do have two other buttons. We have an AGC button and a low noise amplifier button, both of which I have turned on. So over here in the RX control window, you can see that I've got both radios tuned to 7.137 MHz at the moment. You can see they're both in lower sideband mode, and they're both running a filter width of 2.8 kHz, and both of them have their noise blankers off, 
and both AGCs are currently set to slow. Over here in the extended window control, you can see I've got both radios set with the same exact options. And you can see over here in the auxiliary spectrum and main spectrum windows that both radios are set to show the same amount of bandwidth and have the same settings. So what I'll do now is find something to listen to on the RSP-1A. We'll get the receiver going and see what it sounds like. Uh, your 80 meter uh, Yagi that you got uh, on the 80 meter side, did he build that into the, did he build that out of the uh, Easy Neck and the modeling and the design and do the design work in the Easy Neck? Oh yeah, yeah, Roger, Roger. I'll tell you how that came about. And uh, uh, the, 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 the Leo was the first guy to take the um, the Cushman method of uh, phasing and adopt it, adapt it to uh, uh, to my beam. Okay, so as you can hear, we've got a couple of stations having a conversation here on 7.137. So you can see over here in the spectrum window, there's some information about the signal strength. Right now, we're getting about a negative 80 or so dB reading on the signal that's transmitting, which is presumably the stronger of the two, the guy with the British accent. And then over here, we're getting a roughly maybe 20 dB signal to noise ratio. It's a little tough to tell. You can see the band kind of moves around as noise comes and goes and things like that. But the noise floor is somewhere between negative 120 and negative 110 decibels. The audio on both stations was quite clear and readable. No issues. A little bit of background noise there, but that's pretty normal for this band at this time of night. So what I'll do now is stop this radio. I'll switch the antenna over so that it's connected to the RSP-1. We'll push play and see what that one sounds like. And, 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 and then you just add elements. I guess you convert it into a Yagi and then just added elements to it over time. Is that, is that, is that generally accurate? Oh, you said 40, I'm talking about the 80. Now, the 80-meter beam was the first one. The two-element phase array on his was the first one he designed. So as you can see here, the signal strength is roughly the same as it was on the RSP-1A when we were listening to these guys. And the signal-to-noise ratio is about the same as well. And you can see the noise floor seems to be about the same, somewhere between negative 120 and negative 110. So not a huge difference between the two radios, at least in terms of receiving stronger signals here on 40 meters. So what I'll do now is I'll tune around and see if I can find a weaker station and see if that makes any difference. So let's first start listening to it with the RSP-1 and see what it sounds like there and then we'll switch over to the 1A and see if there's any difference. So I found a net here on 40 meters with some stations that are a little bit weaker than what we had before. So I'm going to listen in here for a few minutes. I'll pay attention to the weaker stations and see what we get. Hey, uh, stand by. We've got some guys in the Middle East that want to uh, say hello. So just uh, uh, we'll, we'll, let me know if you can hear them, Tom. Stand by. Uh, Tom, you go ahead. Yeah, he's going to second. Uh, uh, then uh, try uh, I'll uh, pull back. Uh, Alpha 4 1 MO, Dr. Samir, Alpha 4 1 MO from Oman. He was trying earlier to uh, check the signal with you. Um, one moment, he will be with us, okay? I'm sorry, uh, yes, I stand by. So there's a sample of a net control in Rhode Island, which isn't far from here, talking to some stations in the Middle East, which are a little bit weaker. I'm going to quickly switch over to the 1A so we can still catch some of those guys and see what they sound like. And, uh, so having looked at the reception on 40 meters side by side, it really didn't seem like there was a huge difference between the 1 and the 1A, at least not to me. The place where I noticed the most difference was when trying to receive that weak signal from the Middle East. It was perfectly readable on both radios, but seemed just a little bit clearer and a little bit stronger on the 1A. But again, for all intents and purposes, I didn't see a huge difference in the performance between the two radios side by side, at least not with the setup that I have here. So I am going to talk to Tom of Tom's Radio Room Show, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I'll compare notes with him and see what his results are, and we'll go from there. But that's going to do it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.